Hello guys, welcome back. In the last video, we discussed about keywords and identifiers in C. Now in this video, it is time that we now under try and understand the notion of data types and sizes in C. So first of all, let us take a look at data types. So data types means uh, C. The name itself suggests the first part says data, second, uh, second part says types. That means the type of data. So in the last video, we had discussed that uh, rather if you remember the example that we had taken in the last video, the example of calculating the sum of two variables and storing it into a third variable. In that example, obviously our uh, var1 and var2, both of them have had certain type. That means uh, we had taken, we had actually taken them to be of integer types. But then if you want, you can also change it to some decimal value type, uh, say float or double, or you can keep it as it is. So uh, that is what data, that is data type C. Over there, we had taken it to be an integer. So in C programming, what happens is whatever variable you take, you must specify that what is the kind of that variable or what is the type of variable. For example, if you want to store your name, say uh, your name is say suppose Rahul. So if you want to store Rahul into some variable, then you must obviously take it to be a type of character because that name, anyone's name is not, it does not obviously contain integers. It contains only letters from the English alphabet A to Z. So obviously we will take a character in that case because we want to store only name. Next, if you want to store the result of the operation 8 divided by 5, then obviously it is not a perfectly a whole number. It has some decimal value. So if you store it inside some integer, then the decimal value that the quotient contains will be eliminated. So that's why in order to avoid such circumstances, we use the float data type, float or double. Uh, both are both do the same thing just the difference is that float has lower precision and double has a higher precision so that was about data types in c now according to the definition data types in c refer to an extensive system which is used for declaring variables or functions of different types the type of a variable determines how much space it occupies in storage and how the bit pattern store is interpreted yes this is one important thing the type of the variable determines how much space does a variable occupy in storage obviously when we are declaring some variable then that variable is not just floating around in the air it is obviously stored somewhere and what is that somewhere that somewhere is nothing but our hard disk itself so hard disk or maybe ram okay depending upon what is the use of that variable so that means your variable is occupying some space in the memory, be it 4 bytes or be it 4 kilobytes. That is not uh, important. What is important is to understand that whatever variables we declare, they always occupy some space in the memory. So that is why if we, uh, you know, the changing the type, changing the type of the variable or changing the data type of a variable might lead to a change in the memory size that is acquired by that variable. Next we have the types. These data types can be classified into primitive or basic and the second one is derived data type. So some primitive data type we had seen in the last, very, uh, last video also, for example, void, int. Other than that, we have some more, you know, uh, some more this thing, basic or primitive data types. These are like a float, then we have a character, we have double, etc, etc, etc. And next is the notion of derived data types. Derived data types, the name itself says that they have been derived some, from somewhere. They do not exist on their own. Some primitive basic data types have been taken and then they, and then the basic data types have been modified in such a manner that the newer ones, the newer data types can serve as, you know, the newer, uh, whatever the modified version is, that can serve as a data type. And such data types are known as derived data types. For example, void, int, float, char, etc. are the primitive basic, primitive or basic data types, and arrays, 
structures classes all these things are example of derived data types all these uh, whatever i mentioned that is arrays class structure for unions etc these things we shall study as we move on with our course now obviously yeah in the last video i had written something called void main so what the void keyword means the void keyword or void type is nothing but a type which signifies null that means it does not return anything so for a function whose return type is void that function does not return anything to anyone once the execution of that function is over it's done it is not going to wait to return something and hence in such scenarios we use void types now let us to look take a example or let us take a look at this chart over here this chart shows three three columns the first column contains the type of the variable the second one contains the storage size and the third one contains the range of values so our character variable or character data type takes the storage space of only one bytes and obviously its range is from minus 128 to 127 if you consider the negative as well as the positive scale otherwise if you consider only the positive scale then its value range is 0 to 255 now unsigned char this unsigned char means whatever be the value we will not have a minus before the value that means for unsigned char the storage size remains the same that is 1 byte but the value range changes from 0 to 255 okay now the next one is signed char for signed signed char means there will be some sign maybe a minus or for plus we obviously do not specify anything so signed char sto also occupies 1 byte in the storage but its value range is pretty less it is minus 128 to 127 similarly we have int occupies 2 to 4 bytes of space depending upon the architecture of the co computer that is a 30 uh, sorry uh, depends upon 32 bit or 64 bit architecture if it is a 32 bit architecture then integer will occupy 2 byte storage otherwise it will occupy 4 byte storage in case of a 64 bit computer architecture next we have unsigned int this one is also same as unsigned char in case of unsigned char we did not have any you know negative or positive similarly in unsigned int also we will not have any negative or positive it will just be the positive values so other than int we have short we have unsigned short we have long and so on now let us uh, see this yeah if you want to calculate the size of some type then for that you can use an operator which is the size of operator this operator returns to you the size of the variable that you specify or size of the type that you want to find other than that there is a header file called float.h this file has few macros that allow you to see the range of values that are supported by the float data type we will study about macros and details later on but over here what is said is there is a header file named float.h and this float.h header file contains few macros or few you know classifiers which can return the minimum and maximum value of that particular data type for example flt underscore min flt underscore max both of them are a part of this float dot h and these are macros so flt underscore min returns the minimum float value and flt underscore max returns the maximum float value that is possible so these are the three basic types actually we have in order to yeah if you want to store some decimal values then we have these three basic types so the first type is float and its storage size is 4 bytes of memory the value range is already given over here it is 1.25 to the 1 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 38 to 3.4 10 to the power 38 so that is the range of the values that float supports and its precision is six decimal places on the other hand the double type the second one the double type has a storage size of 8 bytes and this is its value range and its pre precision is very uh, nice 
or very good as compared to float it has a precision of 15 decimal places and next we have the precision of 19 decimal places which corresponds to long double and its storage size is 10 bytes and uh, also its value range is given over here so that is all about uh, this video uh, let us take a look at a small example over here i will write say printf Uh, maybe uh, say if you want to write size of something in comma size of int so over here we are saying that we want to compute the size of an integer variable so let us see if it runs well yes so over here we can see the size of integer is 4 so similarly we can have the size of anything that we want for example size of float then say we have this size of long size of char and in order to be able to understand what is getting printed let us put new line character over here so this will help us to introduce new line everywhere and further let us write like this int float long then we have char and so on and so forth uh, we can also have double we can have long double we can have long int so it is basically up to us in what uh, what is our requirement and in what scenario are we going to use the data types so say we have a double over here so size of double say if we have a long double then here we'll write long double so these things will return to us the size of all these operators so let us see if there is no error it should compile perfectly yes see the size of integer is 4 bytes float is 4 long 4 char 1 double 8 long double 16 and so on and so forth so this size of operator is a very important operator as of now because this will return to us whatever is the size of this particular data type that you have specified inside the parenthesis of size of now later on when we will discuss function you might get confused that the size of the syntax of writing this thing is similar to a function but the thing is that it is actually an operator and not a function so this is an important difference which you should always know so that is all for this video thank you